Welcome back, Ram fans. This is Rams Up, your favorite L.A. Rams podcast. We are proud members of the Fans First Sports Network. That's fansfirstsports.com. You can also follow us on YouTube. Our channel is at L.A. Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. You'll hear from my co-host, Tom, on occasion as well. Hey, we're not Rams insiders. We're just longtime fans who love talking about our Los Angeles Rams. Let's get to it. Welcome back, everybody. Episode 350 of Rams Up, and we have the second part of our end-of-season roundtable with Paul, Ian, Tom, and myself. Before we get to that, a couple of items. Kyron Williams suffered a broken hand on that play late in the Lions game and had surgery So very good chance he would have missed that game at Tampa Bay and maybe even additional games if the Rams had survived that game in Detroit. And since it is episode 350, I'm going to talk real quickly about a player who wore number 50. How about Ken Iman, the great center? Six feet, 240 pounds, played four years with the Packers and then 10 years with the Rams. He started in 140 straight games for the Rams from 1965 to 1974 and was voted team MVP in 1972. How about that interior offensive line? Hall of Famer Tom Mack, Ken Iman, and Joe Shabelli. Talk about being strong up the middle. One of the better offensive lines of that era. Rams have had some great offensive linemen over the years, that's for sure. On to the second part of our roundtable. Good stuff. The previous episode, the first part of the roundtable, was all about the offense. Now we're going to talk about the defense looking back at the 2023 season and looking ahead to 2024 and what changes we'd like to see, or at least changes that the Rams very likely will have to make. Hey, um, yeah, let's move on to the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. And... uh... Mark has a plan for our defensive line. <laughs> I've had this plan. Yeah, I've been sitting on this plan for a year, and I'm sorry. I, I don't know if I was supposed to go first. but Yeah, no. My, I, I wanna, hear it. Yeah, my, it. my plan yeah, is I think it cost $8 million to bring back Greg Gaines and Ashawn Robinson. Oh. They, both left on, they both left on one-year deals, and to me, that's exactly what we need. Um, okay. Two productive players. The gang's all here. Uh, and and I bet you they would both love to come back. Where does that leave Kobe Turner uh, if if say Gaines comes back? Well, I, I still think there's enough snaps for all four of those guys uh, and Bobby Brown too. Um, I, I don't, don't know. think they I, play the same either. By the way, I don't think they yeah. play the same at all. I, I think their styles of how they attack offensive linemen and play their game are, are just not the same. So. In terms of what you're saying, Tom, about like you know, who gets more snaps and all that, I mean that's a battle of that's a battle of uh, of training camp, I guess would settle that. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, and I, I guilty uh, guilty as charged if you're uh, if if you're asking me if I've really thought through thought it through that deeply, and I really haven't. I'll defer to Paul and Ian. I think they know how these guys get used more than I do, but I I still think we need some difference makers on the defensive side of the ball. I think we also need a, a, a splash edge rusher and a cornerback. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the defensive line, um, I mean, our defense line's okay, but uh, I don't think it's anything close to what we had during that Super Bowl run. Yeah, I think I think when it comes to defensive line, again, it's going to be another position we just keep drafting. Let's see who we keep, you know, hitting on or don't hit on hopefully not but it's going to be donald and um and kobe for majority of the d tackle snaps right obviously in three four bobby brown's a nose right i mean him and and kobe will switch depending on the matchup they want to exploit but uh you know can we upgrade over bobby yeah because he's inconsistent jonah williams he's inconsistent as well so I just think, you know, unless there's a free agent that works money wise and it's not too over the top or if it happens to be some spectacular guy, which I just I can't think of a D tackle right now. That's a free agent. That's like, oh, my God, um, it's going to be them, too. And probably Bobby Brown, unless, you know, we draft some other big boys to, to overtake that role. I mean, what about you, Paul, Tom? I mean, I just I just see like that's going to be the top our top two guys, Kobe, Donald, then maybe a Jonah and 
and Bobby, unless, you know, we draft some other young guys who happen to step up, right? That's what it feels like to me. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the depth chart, it makes sense. So I probably, I think, uh, I don't think Murchison's going to work his way into the mix. I think uh, Dewan Johnson has shown that he probably might get moved up. So you'll have Jonah and Dewan for the for the depth part of it. Kobe, Aaron, you know, I'm not sold on Bobby Brown. I really, I really am not. I'm just like still waiting. You know, I, I always, I always believe. Like, listen. Two three years if they don't if they don't step up it's time to move on. By the way, what a great storyline would it have been if Ashawn Robinson was with the Rams and we were in Detroit? How what a good storyline that would have been because uh, that's where he I think that's where he started out um, mm-hmm. and he would have shut down that running game. We would not have had an issue in the first half. But having said that, um, I do think there is a spot uh, behind Bobby Brown or if they because if they do stick with Bobby Brown, which probably they will, um, somebody behind him that has a little bit more pass rush sizzle. Uh, whether it's a you know low cost vet or somebody that can really plug a gap that can really complement and bring a little bit more pass rush, you know what really killed the Rams was this, this lack of pass rush, and it wasn't just the edge, you know the the Detroit game really highlighted that that mm-hmm. you know Donald's getting triple team like guys should be just walking into the backfield at this point, and the conductor you know he got nine sacks you know, um, but the other part of that you know, he's a great player he's an ascending player. But you definitely have room to bring in one or two players on the D line and toughen up um, the D line. The other thing too is um, depending on how this defensive scheme evolves, is Raheem going to stay? Is somebody else come in? Think you know. Listen, Donald's getting to the latter part of his career. He needs to spend a lot of time at the three, right? He's absorbing way too much abuse, and to get him back to the mode of getting after the quarterback. The Rams are going to have to play a lot more even fronts moving forward. They're a hybrid defense anyway. They're a situational defense anyway. But they're going to have to play a lot more even fronts. Ram Nation, look for the Rams to have a lot more even fronts moving forward um, because now you can take advantage of Turner and Donald uh, on the pass rush. I think that's the best way to do that. Um, We definitely – and, Tom, are you including – Edge with the D-line, or are you going to do them separately? No, I was going to do them separately, just the interior defensive right. line. I'll I mean, stay off of that part. Yeah, but just that's to, what yeah, I mean, Donald and Turner, I just feel like, in, you know, Bobby Brown was playing that run stuff or role that Ashawn was, and, you know, it's a situational uh, – It's a, it's he's not expected to get to the quarterback at all, right? He's just run stuffer. Um, and first down and then run, running situations after that. But then, you know, Donald and Turner were the – uh, you know, Turner was essentially the gains of the, of the, of the prior years. And he did a great job. He's a rookie. Like you said, he's ascending, but the, I think the issue was, is that those guys really, there was not a lot of depth on this, on this uh, defensive line. It was, you know, Jonah Williams did an admirable job. Juan Johnson came in later in the season, a little bit here or there, but they really need more depth. I mean, you look at the, you look at the teams that some of these teams have are, eight guys deep or seven guys deep on the interior of these defensive lines. Like they're they just the look at the Niners. They can't get enough guys. They can't add enough high quality interior defensive linemen and the, and the Eagles and these teams that are going for it. They know they have to run hockey lines in there to keep these guys fresh. That's what they do. We didn't do that. Right. We have Donald and Turner every, every play. Right. I mean, they get, they get, they get uh, spelled every now and then, but it just, you can't expect those guys to bring that kind of heat when you're playing every down. So that's my, my thing is that I like those guys as the starters. I like those guys as our main guys going forward. Um, but we, de- we need two, two, three solid guys behind them to spell them and let them, and you know, let them take a little bit of a breather. So, that's my take on the on the defense. Yeah, and get upfield. That's the key. You got to get up. Yeah, field. yeah, you yeah, right. I mean, you can't the, the the force that they're exerting every single play is, you know, it's an enormous amount of force, right? And so, um, and you know, the it, it wears you out, and that's why, like I say, some of these these teams that are all in are you look at where they sign players. Look, go look at the Niners defensive line depth. It's ridiculous. Same thing with the Eagles, you know, in the last couple of years. So let's move on, though, to edge, right? So we got Byron Young, Michael Hoyt, and, I mean, 
Nick Hampton? I mean, where are we yeah. on this? Uh, where are we on this? Uh, this edge situation. Go ahead. I raise, my, I raise my hand first because look at. I like Byron. I think he's going to grow. And I just think, you know, it wasn't his greatest performance. I thought he played better in the second half. I mean, the whole defense didn't play well that first half. Right. But he's a young player. He still has time to grow and learn. I mean, what, he had nine sacks tied the Rams record. <laughs> Crazy. Happy to see that. Um, Michael Hoyt, I think we should keep because I think he does a good job in run fits. But again, I think another thing real quick about the Lions game is that they just knew to expose him. They knew the rules and the tendencies of the Raheem Morris defense where they said, okay, if we do, if we line up in this certain trips formation and they're lined up in their base defense, Michael has to drop in this cover three scenario and cover the cover that side of the field or in cover two, whatever coverage it is. They knew the rules and they exposed us. And that's just not. We can't keep crapping on the dude who's 300 pounds, used to be a D-lineman running with wide receivers, okay? It's unfair to the player because the player shouldn't be put in those situations. So, I think Michael rotating in, I think that would be good. I would feel good about that, but let's keep it real. We're all talking about who's the big boy free agents at edge, whether they're four, three defensive ends or they're three, four outside linebackers like we run. Now, Let's just be honest about it. We have to do everything we can to get Josh Allen, the edge rusher from the Jaguars, or Brian Burns from the Carolina Panthers. We just have to. We have to. Because if we go into next year with a similar meh kind of pass rush overall in terms of consistency and aggression and schematics, we're not going to go very far in the tournament anyway. Let's just be honest. So... Now, I know a lot of people talk about Brian Burns because he was going to be a Ram for two first-round picks and a third-round pick. Uh, you know, I'm sure Carolina is feeling foolish for denying that trade now, right? <laughs> I mean, guys, that's what we offered them for Brian Burns. We offered a gazillion picks for McCaffrey, too. You don't think they would have liked to have had those after this disaster season? Whew, they messed up big time. And now we might be able to sign him. He's a good player. I think he's uber talented. I thought he's incredibly explosive off the ball. But I think Josh Allen, Jacksonville, Josh Allen, everybody, number 41, way more power, way more explosiveness, incredible against the run. Awesome. And he's just as good rushing the passer as Brian Burns. So I know people, again, Brian Burns, Brian Burns, Spider-Man, he does a Spider-Man pose and it's cool and all his edits. He has a cool visor and he's all decked out in the in the blue and black and he rocks the Carolina gear. And I was like, oh my God, he would rock Rams gear so much. Hey, if he's a, he's a Ram, I'll be happy. But Josh Allen should be the priority. And likely, let's just be real about it too. I don't think the Jaguars are going to let him go. They're probably going to franchise tag him if they're smart. But organizations who do dumb things the majority of their history tend to not do the right thing. So I think... Both those guys are going to be available. And if I had to choose one, Jacksonville's Josh Allen, the edge rusher. I don't care if he plays in a 4-3 scheme. He'll work just fine being a 3-4 outside linebacker because you know why? He runs faster than running backs. So there'll be no problem covering uh, tight ends and receivers and running backs out of the backfield if he needs a drop. Similar to Leonard Floyd. He could do it. And anyway, that's my rant about that because we need it, man. There little shade on Michael Hoy. Hey, uh, all right, Paul, what are your thoughts on our, uh, on, <laughs> no our shade, edge, dang it. on our edge situation? Yeah, I mean, honestly, Allen in Jacksonville is also one of my favorite players. I think if there's some way to wedge him out of there, because you're right, I, they are going to franchise him. There's no question about it, right? Yeah. He's like he's like their only asset next to my boy, uh, number 16 out there. But um, he would what he would do to this defense, oh, man would be just i mean it's it would be just lights out it would be phenomenal to have him but the other name i'll put into the edge mix is Zadarius smith on a one year deal one year deal 11 million Zadarius smith i love his style of play it fits great especially playing on the strong side he could stand up he could put his hand in the dirt he with michael hoyt uh providing the depth perfect on the left hand side Monster Zero can stay on the right-hand side. You can then cultivate maybe another young pass rusher behind him, and there's your four edge. And right, it's consistent pass rush, no downs off. Right, that's the thing. The defense too many times had to take a down off because their primary players were not on the field. 
right? That means there's your lack of depth, sort of like what Tom was saying, right? So when you can bring in when, like, for example, Bobby Brown goes out and you bring somebody else in that has a little bit of pass rush sizzle, you know, it just keeps the defense humming. So uh, Zadarius Smith, Brian Burns, uh, they're going to free up some money. You know, let's see who they're willing to make a commitment on because it's probably going to be a multi-year deal. If not a multi-year deal, then you can get Zadarius Smith maybe on a one- or two-year deal. And I think he's a proven yeah. winner, tough as nails, you know, checks all the boxes. I don't think anybody would complain. He's up there in years, definitely. But I think he would still be a great contributor to the edge. The draft strategy could be one advantage about now with the first round Ram Nation with the first round pick salaries is this. They're picking in the 20s, right? They're at 20 or 21, the Rams. So I looked it up. It comes out to about 5 million, a little bit less than 5 million a year, right? Four year deal for that slot. If, and this is a big if, guys, this is a big if, if Verse or Chop Robinson trickle down, which is not going to happen, we know it's not going to happen, but if it does, to get one of those two to play on the left side with that cap number for four years, you're all in. Do it. You pull the trigger. Um, And that's what's another way that they can attack it. Braswell from Alabama, that would be another one, but that's much later in the draft probably uh, early second, maybe late first. but So they can also attack the edge, excuse the pun, through the draft because it's the perfect sort of position that you can extract a lot of value with because it's one of the highest paid next to quarterback, one of the highest paid positions in the NFL. So free agency isn't always the answer unless you're getting like sort of a supernova player like Allen, you know, which, you know, just uh, – Thinking about it in my head, Allen lining up is just sick, right? I'd uh, say, dude. Or, or Burns, right, would be just sick. And it should even uh, Daniel Hunter would be nice, man. On you know the, the 10, 12 million kind of range, that'd be cool. Yeah. I mean, shoot, there's a, and don't forget do Allen, it. even though he's a D tackle, but talk about going more to even fronts, Tom. Allen in Washington, they've been talking about trading him forever, right? You know, extra. I mean, his cap number is a little high, but. Bringing him in too, that might be interesting to see. So a lot of that will be decided by is Hendo taking over? You know, Hendo's a D line coach. He might go to even front. He said, "Yeah, let's do this." Right? Um, but now, there are a Hendo, lot of ways. That- sorry to interrupt you, Paul. Uh, breaking news: Hendo got uh, left the Rams today and went to USC Trojans as the um, co co defensive coordinator. So. Oh. There you go. Hendo, co. Yeah, on, we lost dude. Hendo today. Yeah, it was yeah, a well, they, they time. Gave the, yeah, they gave him a pay raise. There's no doubt about it. Oh, I mean, yeah. You, yeah. Don't, you only well, leave to college if you're getting a couple million more. Or, you know, he got, he gets million. coordinator duties. That's what he wanted. You know, I mean, that's, that's yeah. the next step. Regardless and, and he of deserved it. He deserved yeah. it. Yeah, but did. there you go. So now you, now you have, you know, and depending if Raheem Morris is coming back, if he doesn't get a gig, so you got some room to play with. And that might change the dynamic of how the edge is utilized how much of a priority. I think the Rams have, of their four spots, they have two filled, one backup on the left side, a starter on the right side with Monster Zero, um, and they have to fill the other two with players that could, you know, if they want to win in 2024, guys that can play today, right? And I think Darius Smith would be a great fit if, if we don't get one of the star players and if we don't attack it through the draft. Yeah, I mean, the Rams definitely uh... – and we everybody knows, you know, famously have not had any first round picks in the McVay era, and they have a first round pick this year. And whether they use it or uh, I don't know if you can hear Cooper Cup in the Cooper Puff in the background, there. trade um, back. Yeah, trade. Well, they or they yeah. trade back. They did that one year. They yeah. did trade back one year. Um, but uh, I mean, they, shoot, they do, I mean, they do shoot, have gentlemen. a real quick, real quick, not to interject. I mean, apologies, I am interjecting, but I mean, dude, they, it, it was it's been known that. They were trying to trade up for either Zay Flowers or Dalton Kincaid this last draft. That's that's the word around town that I've heard from people who are half in the know that have, you know, reliable sources. They were the ones who broke the New Jerseys to me like, hey, I know a dude who knows a dude. And that was the info. And, hey, man, we saw the calls and we heard on ESPN or NFL Network, if you were listening to the draft, that, hey, Rams are making calls. They're trying to jump up. And they were like dang it after zay flowers got picked and dang it after kincaid so they're not afraid to to move up if they like somebody so 
Who yeah, knows what we're going to do? Who knows, man? Trade back, trade up, stay put. I mean, I'm all for more picks now. Well, we have 10 picks right now. And, um, you know, uh, it, obviously the extra picks are all, are all at the end in the sixth and seventh from those comp picks. But, uh, yeah, they do like to get a lot of picks. They had a great, great job with 14 picks last year. Uh, but typically they have traded that first pick away, right? And to try and go after somebody. I mean, Demoff said it. It, you know, we all were reading into, you know, trying to figure out what their thinking is. Demoff, I love when he does those. He comes on and does these interviews. He just says it how it is. He said, we believe that, you know, just looking at the data that trading for a first round player or trading a first round pick uh, that quali- for that quality of a player that deserves that um, is much more uh, likely to succeed and be a star, you know, caliber contributor to our team than signing free agents he said signing free agents is as hit and miss as draft picks are and they're way more expensive so yeah. and um so you know that's their that's their mentality that's their that's their mojo so i do not i, I mean and then after the alan robinson thing and i just don't see they have that that cap space anyway that's for another show but i don't know what they're going to do with it you know it's it's yeah, it's, know. it's, it's going to be interesting to see <laughs> how that all how that all plays out but um anyway let's move on to uh, a quick conversation about inside linebackers um before we move on to the uh defensive back so obviously we got Ernest Jones and uh Roseboom stepped up you know played a, a good second fiddle this year um we didn't see Hummel at all and uh I mean do we what would it be like if we had a, a another superstar inside linebacker, um, you know, like kind of like the Niners have with their two guys and, you know, or do we just go with the one stud and then the, uh, and then the under, you know, the, the, the secondary guy. I mean, Rams typically have not paid inside linebackers. And I don't expect that to change gentlemen. I mean, Ernest Jones, one of the best line inside linebackers, I think for sure the best blitzing linebacker. I don't even think that's debatable after what he put on tape this last season set the franchise record for tackles after missing a game, didn't play in the season finale. So he missed two games and broke the record. He didn't even need that extra game or two to even accelerate that record even higher, but we're just going to draft and hope that other, that other players hit. I don't see us spending money on a free agent linebacker again, like Bobby Wagner. They did it. They regretted it because of the money they got themselves tied up in, and they're not going to do it again. Yeah. So it's going to be earnest and a Roseboom, who I thought played admirable. Sincerely. I really, I really thought he had some big plays in the wildcard game. He had a great angle on Jameer Gibbs, where if he didn't get that tackle, Jameer was going to break another 10 yard run, probably. So I think uh, Roseboom's done enough to keep the job. I don't know what his status for free agency is. Yeah, he's he's, he's on the team. So he'll be on the team. So it's going to be them two. You we know. can always bring back Troy Reader, right? I mean, that, that's always ah, that's. We can I'm sorry, always... I'm I'm with I'm with the boom now, man. Troy sorry. is always. Yeah, you know, I'm with the boom also. All right, that was it. <laughs> yeah, not not much to talk about there. Let's uh, yeah. with Ernest Jones, um, wearing the dot and uh, and and keeping things steady on the inside there. So, well, let's go out to let's go to the uh, to the defensive backs. Um, uh, Mark, what do you have any thoughts on this cornerback room? We got we got obviously uh, Durant. Um, Tomlinson, um, Kendrick, and uh, I think Witherspoon actually is is going to be back. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'll look it up right now, but um, my notes show that he is. So really, uh, those are the guys on the at the cornerback spot. And we'll leave uh, we'll leave the safeties for uh, uh, a second conversation. But any thoughts on what we need to do there? Well, uh, it doesn't look good, in my opinion. Um, I think we have uh, a foundation, I guess, but I don't think... Uh, now, I thought Witherspoon was a free agent, um, but it, it, let's say we bring him back. Uh, I see him as, you know, as he's a decent cornerback, obviously, but we, we don't have a stud cornerback on this roster. I don't think Witherspoon really is. He's a good player, but not a, a real difference maker, in my opinion. Um, so I would think that would be uh, an area we'd spend some money, perhaps a proven cornerback. You're correct. Uh, Witherspoon, I, Witherspoon is a free agent. So, yeah. 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 So and I know Quentin Lake, he's very, you know, versatile. He, he's like a Swiss army knife back there. So we should think about him, too, in some role as far as, you know, the cornerback room. 
But yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think this defense overall has just been. You know, remember Tom, you said at the beginning of the year we were just going to have to outscore teams, and early in the year it was really the other way around. The defense played really well, but I think towards the end of the year we started to see the defense really struggle, uh, get burnt a lot, and and I think it really was the secondary. So um, I, I think it's pretty pretty obvious we need a couple of bodies back there, a couple of. Of good, we need to add a couple of good players, whether it's in the draft or free agency, to the cornerback room. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, geez, guys, we this whole this whole secondary is we can have totally new starters on every position next year. Sincerely, Jordan Fuller, I I thought he's played great football, but again, he missed another playoff run because of an ankle he's injury. A, he's a free agent, an unrestricted free agent. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I mean, damn, dude. I feel bad for him because obviously we won a Super Bowl without him. The next year, he talked about his confidence and not feeling good about that about his ankle, and he didn't play. And he got demoted that 2022 campaign last season. He was getting less snaps than Taylor Rapp and Nick Scott. Sheesh. Then you know gets gets his confidence back. He feels good about his leg and ankle. Then he's a captain. He's back to his captain level of playing this last season, but then he gets hurt again in a week in in a week eighteen game, going into free agency. Not good, man. John Johnson. It was fun for a while, but he's you know as games went on, he just didn't look like a like a player you'd like to move on with for future years. It seems like his time as a starter is weaning down, and who knows with that? I don't expect I think, him to I be think back. Quick- I think Quentin Lake is the only one that really had a, a really good season, and Witherspoon too. I think. Although yeah, some Withers- people, some people t- say, I, I hear little blurbs on Twitter and Reddit and elsewhere that Darian Kendrick is a lot better than people give him credit for. I haven't watched enough tape to, to I, make a judgment on that. But. Well, okay, let's go on to him then. So I said, well, let's, well, real quick before we move on the corner in my mind here, and, and please interject anybody if you have any other thoughts, please. Uh, so them too. Russ East, I thought was you know has done admirable mm-hmm. things, but he's better at the dime spot. We've talked about it. He was really good playing the dime linebacker spot. Um, him at up top at safety is wishy washy. Uh, Quinn Lake up top is wishy washy, but he's very good. He's been very productive in the star slot nickel area, and that's our safety group. That's not the greatest feeling. Corners. Darion Kendrick, there's great moments, Mark, like like you know, yeah, you're talking yeah. about. And there's a lot of that was really bad moments. <laughs> and we've all lived through that roller coaster of many a games this season, right? Everybody. And then Kobe Durant, everyone wants him to be the star, but he's just literally not comfortable. Like the game field does the game film doesn't lie. He's just not comfortable in that position. He's way more comfortable on the outside, but he's not the best on the outside either. Akello started the season off great, but Man, he was getting cooked a ton this last month and some change. And then we have Trey Tomlinson, who, when he's out there, is getting scored on, too. And he's a smaller guy. And uh, Duke Shelley, you know, he'll probably be gone. Uh, Who else am I thinking of? I'm just blanking on names. But, again, I say all that. I bring all that up. I'm not trying to be too negative. But we can have an entirely new secondary next year, and it wouldn't shock me at all. Maybe other than Quentin Lake, truthfully. Paul. So we've all seen the Magnificent Seven, right? Yes. Go so <laughs> I, I think – so you were asking, like, what are they going to do with all this money? So I agree with you. So far, the Rams front office, they, uh, unless it's a select player, an elite player, they're not going to go in on a multi-year deal, right? So I think you're going to see a hired gun concept. What are we going to do with this money? They're going to target some about four or five guys they're going to bring in to fill in some key spots. So – Taking a look at the secondary, Quinton Lake is definitely a baller. He can play strong safety, like, out of his mind, right? He plays great, closer to the line of scrimmage. So, yeah, so I think some, you know, taking over for Jordan Filler, I definitely think you could use Quentin Lake. Russ Yeast uh, as a backup, a dime uh, D-back, definitely not a problem. Now, Jordan Fuller might come back to the Rams because he got hurt. He's not going to get a lot of money out there. He might as well stick around. And the Rams probably would love to have him back. So he might still be in the mix, right? So that, you know, as opposed to getting a, a ridiculous offer like Johnny Johnson got or Nick Scott got, right, when they were with the Rams. So that'll be interesting. So familiarity with the scheme is what brought Johnny Johnson back. Now, if the scheme stays the same, 
that's in Johnny Johnson's favor. If they if the scheme changes because of a different coordinator or whatever, um, that doesn't bode well for Johnny Johnson. But I I do agree. I think his play definitely did show some uh, chinks in the armor uh, as the season rolled on. Now corner is a different story. Now one player I do like hired gun concept is Gilmore. I think Gilmore would do great in this defense. I really do. I love – he's a big corner. He's physical. He can man up if you need him in those clutch situations, but he can also play zone, right? He spent a lot of his time uh, playing man, but we've seen a lot of that with these man corners that as they get older, right, and they start to play a little bit more in the zone, their play gets better, right, because now they can exist in both arenas. So I and think – Real Gilmore quick, Paul, to that, <laughs> I mean – Sunday's game wasn't a good showing for that man, Gilmore. <laughs> no, well, yeah, I mean, but for what the Rams. Story. So think about this though: if Witherspoon could look like an All Pro in this defense, what can Gilmore no, I, look I, like I in this defense? Right? Because I get it. I mean, it, you know, it's a different responsibility set. What I like about Gilmore is that. So first of all, like you said, that's going to bring his price value down, not up, which is the Rams are going to be smiling about. Right. He's got the experience. He's he's got the the track record of winning, and he's got the size and the physicality. So think about it, star scenario, right? Even on the boundary or bouncing back and forth, that flexibility. So I think the hired gun concept is the solution for at least two positions in this secondary. They the Rams draft very well when it comes to safeties. They get a lot of value. We see this, right? We see it in Lake. We saw it in Fuller. We saw it in Nick Scott. So that track record, uh, I'm counting on that they're going to get one more, at least one or two in the draft. But corner, uh, well, we're going to see Thompson's going to play more, right? There's no question about that. I would definitely bring back Witherspoon, right? For what they were paying him and how he played, you know, think about that. I think he would be a nice fit. But they definitely have to bring in a nice mix of young talent, right, upper draft picks, with some veterans, but not just veterans off the, you know, uh, trash heap, but veterans that can play, that can ball out. And that might be – and you look at the free agents, free agency list, I don't think there's any real corner that jumps out at me that's, like, off the chart. I guess, well, I do, Paul, to that, I mean, I guess what, the Bears corner, what's his name, Johnson? Yeah, Johnson. I mean, I'm not I, – I like the Jerry and Sneed, though, from Kansas City, I will say no, that. I do I like do, Sneed. I do, I do like, like Sneed. Sneed. I agree I mean, with that'd you. that'd be cool. But they're saying his contract's going to be off the charts, right? Because oh, he's going to be coming in at, at a ridiculous number. But if you start to look at that second and third tier, there might be some very cost-effective veterans that you can bring in that would love to play in this scheme. What? You know, like, oh, keep the ball in front of me and crack the receivers and get some INTs? Yeah, I can play in this defense, right? Yeah. So, I mean, Gilmore makes sense. Maybe Fuller, right, from from Washington. He's had a lot of good yeah. seasons. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm trying Good to think point. of people who I knew were free agents without looking at it. I mean, I don't know. I think, I mean, Moore, maybe. Like I said, yeah, there are a lot of guys in this defense I think that can do really, really well. It would be nice to be able to draft a good, young, tall corner that's physical coming out of the SEC, hint, hint, or Iowa State, hint, well, hint, eh. <laughs> Tampa. Right, the kid Tampa out of Iowa State, so that I think would also uh, be a nice solution to one of the problems. But yeah, I mean, secondary is light at corner. Corner is a big, big question mark going into next season. Yeah, it is. And uh, what were you saying, Tom? Sorry, I don't think uh, I can't hear you too well. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I think there's a lot of gaps to fill in this defense where when we talked about bringing in some reinforcements on the uh, defensive line. Certainly we need the, uh, the edge pressure. And then we, now we move on to the entire uh, defensive backfield and uh, we need some impact players. So a lot of, uh, a lot of this money and a lot of, yeah, yeah, Tom and guys, I heard you can get a a premier corner for a third round pick. I wonder, I wonder who's uh, shopping around their top guys. (laughs) That's right. That's right. That trade still bothers me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and we took cap. We, we took love you, Jalen. Shout out to your mariachi <laughs> suit and embracing all the <laughs> Los Angeles community. We'll, we'll see you back here in a ring of honor one day. We took, uh, yeah, we took some big cap in on that trade as well for, for, uh, an insult to injury, but you're not going to talk about kicker Tom. 
Well, You're not gonna I, was, I, was gonna move, I was gonna move on. I'm, I'm able to finally. <laughs> so the last segment is special teams, right? So Ethan Evans is is the guy, right? Yep, so good, I'm good, good with him. Him. Right, we got, and, I mean, which guy are we gonna bring back? Are we gonna bring back Haversick or Brett Maher? Which which one is it, guys? Which one Cameron Dicker? We're bringing and back so, Dicker the Dicker. <laughs> Greg the Leg is a free agent. Greg the Leg. Oh, okay, Mark. Man, I mean, just let's just be truthful about our, how Rams treat free agency. If you're not coming back for the vet minimum, Troy Hill, John Johnson, uh, who else am I blanking on right now? I'm just trying to think of recent guys who have been back on the super, super cheap. If Greg ain't signing for the vet minimum, he ain't coming back. And he's missed a lot of kicks, and that's why he oh, hasn't has he? been on the team. I mean, let's just keep it real that way, too. But for kicker... I mean, hopefully we've learned our lesson. Maybe, maybe not. Could we keep doing the same crap until you know we stumble upon a kicker like Matt Gay? We stumbled upon him after struggling right. uh, with his former teams. I mean, but I, uh, I mean, who's available? That's like you feel good about. Maybe Fairbairn, right? I, 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 I don't understand his name. With kicker the dicker. He's already in Los Angeles. Ninety-three percent success rate. He oh, did the great. Kicker, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I he, I looked at his thing. He's eight sixty five. He got paid eight sixty five last year. And is so, he a free agent? Yep. So, and you know the Rams cut him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, Matt Gay look, beat him out. Yeah. The, right. And like Ian said, if you look at that list of kickers, man, it is not impressive to say the least. Yeah, it's just hard to believe that uh, an NFL franchise, you know, one of the one of the thirty two best kickers on the planet is Lucas Haversick. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't doesn't compute. Shocking, isn't it? That they can't find someone somewhere who can kick that ball through the uprights. Ian, how how are you at uh from the right hash mark? Well, gentlemen, good thing I was a running back and I never <laughs> had to kick. So I I don't know. I'll go to the I'll go to the park down the field who's got a nice little football. You can make eight sixty five if you can <laughs> knock it through. 75% now, of the time. Now look it. I don't know. I don't know if the leg power from running back, from squatting, from high jump, long jump, and my four by one realize translates to PATs and, and deep field goals. But I'll give it a try. I'll give it a try and get back to you. I'll film it. I'll put it, I'll share it with Rams Twitter and I'll see if I'm good enough. And uh Tony Pastor's out to give me some cash. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should hold our own uh kicker tryout. How about Ethan? Ethan? Ethan Evans is a kicker, isn't he? That's right. He is. I mean, yeah. he bombs those yeah. kickoffs, which is cool. I mean, luckily, no one ever has a chance to return a kickoff. It's just it's be- touching the back <laughs> of the end zone. That's. I mean, I'm sure in an emergency situation, I bet he could do something really, really short. I bet he could deep down if there was like, does you know, kicker broke, you know, is hurt, can't kick, and it's like somebody has to do it. I'm sure he could do it, but um, I don't like, know who would hold the kick. Can we get some semblance That's of a return right. game? Who would hold the effort out there? Can we get some semblance of a return game, please? Yeah. Can what happened, we... Brad? Why yeah. couldn't we? Brandon Powell was like, he came in and instantly, so just changed everything, right? I mean, yeah. he was super I, solid. That, I mean, that's my point about free agents, man. Like, we'll let guys that aren't going to be dirt cheap. Like, see you later. That's why I, I'm, I'm, that's why we're going to see a lot of new faces on the squad, man. Oh, yeah. And that's see, why Mark, I don't know. Mark and I always reminisce about the 99 squad all the time. And, I, I got like Tony Horn burnt into the back of my like gray matter, man, of that 82 just running downfield and but also being tough enough to cover kicks. We need, you need somebody like that, man. And that like that number seven wide receiver spot or number six wide receiver spot to bring some sizzle, yeah. you know, unless Tutu wants to tr- give it a shot back there so he can contribute. But yeah. uh, they really got to get some semblance of a return game. It's almost sad. And Tom, did you see him? Uh, Austin Trammell almost dropped that one again. He bobbled oh, it again. He I bobbled know, the ball. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rail. I'm gonna read off a few random positions. Uh, free agents. You ready for this? Go ahead. <clears throat> Leonard yeah. Williams, Chris Jones. <laughs> oh, Chris Jones. Daniil Hunter, <laughs> Mike Evans, Odell <laughs> Beckham Jr. <laughs> mm. Bring him back. Carl Sam. Lawson. All right. Uh, let's see. Randy Gregory, Meh. DJ Reader. All right. Uh, Dory Jackson. Mm-hmm. I like Dory Jackson. Yeah, Marcus. USC Davenport. baby. Yeah. USC. Um. Oh, 
How about uh, left tackle, uh, Tyron Smith? Hmm. Zadarius mm-hmm. Smith, Josh Jacobs. Oh, no, running back. Uh, yeah, no, just a few guys at the top yeah. of the list up there. Is, isn't Adoree Jackson a returner as well? Yeah, he, yeah, he was. He's a return, yeah. but the Rams aren't going to jeopardize any important player. Like, that's just how it is. Let's just keep it real. If you're a major factor on the starting D, starting offense, you're not you'll fair catch the kicks like Cooper was for a while, right? And but it's like you're not you're not gonna return yeah, no. none of that. So I mean, even if a Dory was signed here to be a corner, he's not gonna return kicks because Big Bay won't allow it. He's like, you're just too valuable to return. And that's why you don't see a Dory returning kicks at all anyway, because the Giants and his previous teams are like, Hey, you you're too valuable unless it's we need some type of spark in a playoff game or a big game. So I mean yeah, gentlemen. I mean, we're just going to see a brand new team. It feels like, for the most part. I mean, I mean, it's always a brand new team, right? That's just how it is. But I think this year was fun with the group of vet minimums and young guns, right? Second youngest youngest team in the entire league, next to the Packers. Uh, but it's going to be a brand new squad, man. But it's like, can we sign and spend that money wisely on the positions that are needed? Can we get the top edge? Can we get the top corner? Can we get a kicker who can make kicks? You know, and I think that that's priority number one, two, three, two. Yeah, I mean, they got the money to do it, right? $80 million or something like that. So, well, good session, you guys. Let's wrap it up here. And uh, thanks very much. So, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll look, uh, we'll schedule a look at, uh, you know, sort of maybe a, a, we'll do a thoughts on the, uh, on the playoffs uh, so, and, and how those, and how that plays out. And then maybe some more uh, cover some more Rams news and thoughts on that. And then periodically get the round table back together. We're certainly going to uh, spend a lot of time on the free agency and the draft. And then as the, uh, as the uh, camp gets closer, the minis and, and the, uh, uh, and so forth, then we'll, we'll get into it more. So, but thanks again, everybody, Mark, Ian, Paul, this is the Rams up uh, round table signing off. Appreciate you guys. Thanks Thanks a lot. Heck yeah, Rams Nation. We'll see you out there next year. Hey, like I called you out earlier, it got better throughout the season, but I better see you at SoFi. Let's keep it going. Kick in the door in 2-4. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.